Our next um, speaker is going to uh, be drawing for us, and he's going to tell us a story about how he came to HCI from a completely different discipline, cartooning, and how that influences what he does now. Okay. And uh, it's Rube, please welcome Rube Habib. Thank you. I think. Hello, everyone. So I am Rubai Thabib. I'm a researcher at Autodesk User Interface Research Group. So believe it or not, my Kai story started almost 20 years ago. At that time, I was, I was studying in grade six, and my father had just returned from an overseas trip. So as he was unpacking his suitcase, I was very eagerly waiting to see what did he bring for me. Box of chocolates, set of toys. But to my, utter, to my utter frustration, it was none of those. It was just a bunch of drawing books. And you know, at that time, I had no interest in drawing at all. I had like, I thought, yeah, dad, I mean, really? I mean, don't they have chocolates overseas? I was terrible at it. But you know, I still remember that as for the first time, when I opened the books, the first page of the book said, drawing, 90% of the drawing is observation and 10% of it is sketching. So that's the first time I started to realize, you know, drawing is not all about expressing. It shapes how you look at the world and it eventually shapes how you think about the world. So ever since drawing become a form of writing to me, I mean, without pen and paper, I cannot even think. So I really appreciate that Scott arranged this drawing session for me and I'll draw your cartoon, Scott. So, you know, I, when I grew up, I got enrolled into computer science department. And at first, I was very happy. It was in Bangladesh University of Engineering and Tech. It was the top school, top subject. But in a week or so, this is how I started to feel. A fish out of water in a very hardcore programming environment, primarily because programming didn't resonate with my way of thinking. Now, you know, as a part-time cartoonist, I started contributing in local magazines and newspapers, draw graphic novels. But the thing is, like, you know, as a creator, these pictures, these characters, these drawings were not just lines and papers. These are real characters. These are real imaginary characters. They have life, they have emotions, and so on. And then I kept thinking, like, you know, I imagine dynamic things, but I had to express them in a static media. And the, that really frustrated me, you know, that because that limits my imagination. And it was my fantasy, how can I bring life to drawings? I wish I, my drawings and my characters were animated and interactive. That's when I started to look at animation tools. But you know, those, who use, those of you who used animation tools, animation is hard. The fun and fluidity and the immersion of drawing is lost in the process. Anyway, after my graduation, I wanted to be a full-time artist, but it was very challenging to support yourself as a full-time artist, so I had to take a programming job. And that was a very low point in my life because, you know, I was clearly confused what to do with my career. And one day I remember that I came across this YouTube video called I Love Sketch. It's a paper by Sikwang, Karan, and Ravin, and it's a sketch-based paper about doing conceptual 3D modeling. I looked at the paper and thought, wow, I mean, I have never realized that 3D modeling can be that so easy and accessible. And it really showed me the power of user interfaces. Like, user interfaces are like superpowers. The way they empower our creativity, capabilities, and imagination. And it also opened my eyes to this whole new avenues of computing, HCI, art, design, which I wasn't aware of before. So I immediately decided that, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to give super power to artists. So that's when I uh, you know, went to Singapore and started doing my PhD with Shen Dong Zhao in the HCI lab and started thinking, how can I bring life to the drawings? Can we make animation as easy as sketching? 
Can we make the world of anime, bring the world of animations and drawing a little closer? You know, I mean, if you have been to Singapore, you know that Singapore is a tropical country, and it kind of rains almost every day. And I really miss that, the weather, the food, and culture. At some point, I, I moved to Canada and started working in Autodesk with Toby Grossman and George Fitzmaurice. And then, you know, as soon as I came to Canada, these raindrops turned into snowflakes. And growing up in a you know, tropical country like Bangladesh, this wasn't the most comfortable situation. Anyway, I kept thinking, you know, how can, how can we create dynamic media in real time as we are speaking? Can we make animation a part of our day-to-day -day conversation so that we can use it to express our ideas in real time? And, you know, with the right user interfaces, I believe that, yes, we can. So the app I'm using is based on our Kai 2014 paper Draco, which is now available as Sketchbook Motion. And uh, so this really brings life to the drawings. A drawing captures a particular moment and expressions and emotion that you can relate to, right? So now this new medium, this dynamic drawings, liberate you from the limitations of the static medium. And as an artist, my freedom of expression is a bit more wider just like this drawing that captures the vividity of the scenarios and the dynamics of the scene of my first snorkeling experience in a Malaysian island. You know, my wife is a little old-fashioned or traditionalist, I would say, in terms of arts and crafts. She always prefers pen and pencil for some reason rather than digital art. So, you know, one fine morning I woke up and I saw that there's a pen and paper beside my bed. Apparently, she was very stressed out about her exam, and she wanted me to draw her a cartoon. So I sketched this to her. You know, I mean, she's very pampering and annoying during her exams and so on. And she was very happy. She went back to her studies. And I thought, well, this drawing is incomplete. So I did a quick animation. And then she loved it even more. And the interesting thing is that now, every time she wants me to draw a cartoon, she always brings the iPad to me. So that was an interesting shift of perspective there. By the way, uh, just to clarify, I'm not here to promote Apple products or iPads. I know, you know, like most of you, I agree, they are super expensive, they have a closed systems, and so on, so on. I, I mean, I used to complain about all these things as well, but ever since Apple announced our app as the app of the year, which is the top app among million other apps, to be honest, my complaints disappeared. <laughs> and, and my whole family is an iPad family. Even my mom bought, bought an iPad. All she did is that she downloaded the app, gave it a five star, and then she's done. She, she has never used it before. <laughs> anyway, um, going back to Kai, what I really love about Kai is, as Susan said, the diversity of it. It's a discipline where you can bring your true identity, expertise, and background to solve computing problems. And you know, when you are an interdisciplinary person, sometimes it is challenging for you to find your right spot, right community, right job. It's, it's, it can be challenging. But Kai is a community where you can be your true self. I mean, think about it. Where can you write a PhD thesis as a comic book? Only in HCI writing a comic PhD thesis can be so much fun. And these are some of the some of the pages and panels from my PhD thesis slash comic book. So I know for those who are attending Kai for the first time, I strongly encourage you to go to the papers and sessions beyond your discipline, learn about the other disciplines, what they are doing. I'm sure you will truly appreciate the diversity of it. I believe that, okay. So life goes on in Toronto, as you can see that, you know, I don't appreciate winter as much as my wife does. But I believe that as a computer scientist and an artist, HCI gave me a language, a language to express my feelings and emotions through a dynamic visual media. And at the same time, disseminate that language to hundreds, hundreds and thousands of other users by working with the top-notch researchers and product teams. And that's the greatest thrill I know of. And I must say that I'm very fortunate to be able to work with many wonderful people like Toby Grossman, George Fitmaurice, Shin Dong Zhao, Richard Davis, Takeo Garashi, Fanny Chevalier, Bong Xingli, and many others. I'm, 
I'm truly grateful to them for their mentorship and guidance. Well, you know, I've been talking about winter all the time, but Toronto is not all about winter. It has beautiful summer, spring, and uh, fall. And I hate to admit it, but I think lately I just started to appreciate the winter as well. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. But I believe that a dynamic media is much more. A dynamic media is worth a million words. Do you agree? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>